Okay. Today, what Melissa is going to be doing. No. No. Oh, oh, my friend is. That's hey, it. No. I'm a oh, Melissa. My mom calls me Melissa when I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> well, Never you might be. Uh, <laughs> you better get it right. She'll be doing an oil change on her vehicle. We'll be greasing the brakes. We'll be making sure the brakes are properly adjusted. We'll also go through and make a separate little video and of how to do a, a pre-check on your brakes. A lot of you have air brakes and unfortunately don't know how to do a safety pre-check before hitting the road. So we'll be uh, going over that. It's a very simple procedure. Anyone can do it. And if you're driving an air brake bus, you should be doing it. Uh, Melissa will also be changing the belts on her engine because they're cracked and we don't want the belts breaking as she's going down the road and the air filter. Mo has zero mechanical experience. <coughs> Never changed oil, nothing. Yeah. You got this, girl. You got yeah, this. be so, fun. Not real no, no, no. <laughs> cool. Not, Never want to be not gonna be a problem. I'm not sure uh, that big enough. So, Mo has an uh, 8 liter Cummins and it's located at the, 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 the back the of the bus. Whether you have a 5.9, an 8.3, uh, a 466, whatever engine you have, the principles are all the same. It's just the parts may not be in the same place. Uh, like I said, we'll be filming. Brian, uh, Ryan's got some cameras underneath the bus, but if you want to crawl in and have a look, you're more than welcome to do so. Just don't crowd Mo too much. He gets, you know, freaky. Don't crowd me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, a few things upon pre-inspection that we noticed on Mo's bus. First of all, most of you will have a turbo on your bus. The way a turbo works is it takes exhaust pressure, spins a fan. That fan is connected to another fan, which then spins at a very high rate of speed, forcing air into your bus or forcing air into the engine. The more air you have in the engine, the more power that comes out of the engine. So people will, uh, some of you will have a boost gauge telling you that I have 18 pounds of boost when I'm climbing that hill. Melissa probably doesn't have much boost when she's climbing. Do you have a, a mole, sorry. Do you have a boost gauge? Uh, no. No, okay. Because somewhere along the life of this bus, they replace the clamps on these pipes and they use standard plumbing clamps. The hose connectors on here, the little bits of hose, are silicone hose. Silicone hose expands and contracts a lot with heat. And those plumbing ones, when you tighten them up, they stay at one fixed location. They should be what's called a constant pressure clamp, which basically has a big spring on it. So you're tightening the spring down when you're putting it on, and then as the hose expands and contracts, it's always keeping that pressure because of the spring. So she may be losing turbo boost. So she may not have all the power she's supposed to have. I can get up hill about 50, so. Yeah, well, it's not bad. Not but your bus is pretty much empty right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other things that we noticed on the pre-inspection, her oil pan looks like someone jacked the bus up using the oil pan. So it wasn't me. Oh, no. instead, of, instead of being flat on the bottom, it's concave oh, no. meaning that we're not going to get all the oil out of her engine and we're not going to be able to put all the oil back in the engine the next time she does an oil change it will include an oil pan change yes. and the, the gasket <laughs> <run>. <laughs> so when we take the oil out could we take the pan out like bang the dent out no, no because if we do that we may crack the pan it's not cracked now we don't want to risk cracking the pan the next time. So get a new pan. But good question. Uh, the other thing, so we'll be doing the air filter as well, uh, and we'll be showing you how to inspect an air filter just to make sure. It doesn't need to be replaced every time, but you should know how to inspect it. Especially with a rear engine bus, it's gathering all its air from fins on the side of the bus here. So if you're driving down a dirt road, your tires are kicking up a lot of dust, it's sucking in that dust. Uh, there's a busing company that Sylvia and I know that they run buses to uh, oil fields. Oil fields, sorry, not oil, but oil fields. And they actually have a big duct on the top of the bus running the full length of the bus to grab the air at the front of the bus because they would go through filters daily if they didn't. 
So uh, if you do dirt roads a lot, that's something you may want to consider. And by the way, this is where the air filter is in this box. The oil filter is down on the side of the engine in a very fun to reach location. Uh, the fuel filter is here. The fuel filter is a filter that needs to be changed frequently sometimes. <coughs> if you get bad fuel at some point, uh, you, you've had the experience. I'm doing it right now. Yeah, okay. I'm changing so, my fuel filter every three weeks, probably. Yeah, okay. So oh. you picked up bad fuel at some yeah. point. They switched out my gas tank and they took the, the fuel out and then just put it back in, didn't filter it or anything. Oh, but good. Okay. How will you know if you got bad fuel? Bus you will have go. no power whatsoever. <laughs> Bus won't go. Yes. Right. So it goes really, really slow. <laughs> it, I will, know that. it will idle and then if you try to accelerate, it will do nothing. Now, is Amanda here? No? no? Okay. I'm here. But sure. Caden is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, Caden uh, today will probably be reinstalling the turbo on his mother's bus. On Sunday, we, Caden, actually not we, but Caden took the turbo off his mother's bus because it was screwed. And, but the symptoms that she had were the same symptoms as we have a clogged fuel filter or a clogged air filter or a, uh, one of these pipes that's blown out. So if you ever get one of these little connectors that goes, your power, you have no power whatsoever because you have no turbo. Some of you have an older bus that has no turbo. Great, uh, simplifies your life a little bit. You don't but, have power to start with. Pardon me? <laughs> you don't have power to start with. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that Mo will be doing is greasing her bus. And there are some grease fittings on there that haven't seen a grease gun in a very, very long time. We did a little pre-inspection before. So, <coughs> any questions so far? No, let's get Mo under her bus and bring her. Go, Mo! That's it, girl! Go, you got this! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I said this idea. You go, Mo! A little bit of everything. So she's got her very high tech cardboard. Whoa! Yeah! Super Mo! Modern age creeper. Now, the other thing that you'll notice the back end of the bus is jacked up. We have it on wooden blocks. So it's well supported. We have the front wheels chalked so it can't roll on her. And this is a spring bus. So it's on spring. If your bus is on airbags, you never want to get under a bus that's on airbags because an airbag can break. And if an airbag breaks, you get crushed by your bus. Not a happy situation. So how do you shore up airbags? All buses have airbags, right? No, no. This bus has no airbags. So this bus is on just regular leaf springs. If you have an airbag bus, you need jack stands and you need to support the frame of the bus, oh my God. not the... Ah. Oh, there it is! Or park it hey, on take a, a drink of it. I did mine on a hill so I can get under oh, it. Should you change your oil? Pardon me? What temperature should you change your oil? So when you're ch good question. When you're changing the oil, have the engine warmed up. You don't want cold oil. Cold oil like molasses. It won't flow out of the engine properly. So you want to warm the engine up. Moho drove from her parking spot to here. It's good enough. That's good enough. Good thing you have one hand Now you can wipe your hands and nobody will see that's not a 10 minute drive. So, so how, much, how much oil is, is it? Five gallons? I, I think it, it depends on your engine. So every engine is different. Mo Mine said five and a half. Five, five and a half? Five and a half. Yeah. yeah. So it probably will take four and a half. This is a five gallon bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll probably be at five gallons because of the oil pan that's concave. Right. What about antifreeze? How, how big is the antifreeze? How big is the radiator? How many gallons is that? So what happens if your bucket overflows? <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna put the plug. You're gonna put the plug back in. Just start wearing it, Mo. Put the plug back in. Oh, that's there we go. Oh, good job. Yeah, don't drop the plug. Jonathan, where's my jugs? Yeah, so Jonathan is going to get jugs. Good idea. It's warm. Yeah, of course you got the bottle. Be one with your oil. Yes. The, the other thing that this bus has, and your bus may or may not have it. Well, your bus has this part, but the location of the part is variable. 
and that is this little cylinder here. This is the air compressor uh, governor. We have the buckets. Hello, governor. So the oh, air compressor governor, what it does, <laughs> it is the part that controls your air compressor, telling it to come on and off. And usually they're mounted on the side of the air compressor. The air compressor in this bus is very, very hard to get to. So thankfully, the manufacturer put it here, so it's easy to reach. Yeah, that's a little full. That's what I said! He was busy talking, he wasn't paying attention to me! Oh! I never did this! I'm seeing the cardboard underneath. Alright, get your phone right <laughs> we have five gallon pails. Look at that. Teamwork. Oh, wow. There it went. So close. Save it, sleep, Mo. Save it. He just what? dropped no. it. Down. No, no, okay. Burn it. Never made anything. He can't move. He's like, we're good. Don't touch me. You're going to make it spell. <laughs> <laughs> you just we got the cardboard, we're all set. <laughs> I tripped and fall over both of them, and they're Then you really would be on YouTube. Yeah. I don't know if you should put some more in that little can. So are they going to overfill the joke? What's the next one? Oh, yeah, it's a fight, guys. No pressure, guys. What did we do? No yeah. pressure. <laughs> we, throw, we thought it all for it. You can't slide your eye that's for sure. No. Oh, here comes the jug. Hey, let's pick it up a little bit. Run! Yeah. Run here right now. <laughs> uh, Run for they it. They need you! Are you watching? So all week, Jonathan's been running around with his golf cart. Right. And now he's moving it over there quick. He doesn't have to go crazy. He's walking. He's walking. <laughs> 40 miles an hour everywhere he goes. But yeah, he's yeah, 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 yeah. Six kids hanging off. Yeah, normally he's doing double the park speed limit. Diesel. I've been trying to get you. That's a nice shot. That's what you want. So what are you doing? Ours is pretty good. We're going to buy it. They don't have much oil. Oh, 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 yeah. Or just get a fire. I mean, it's like an explosion. I don't know. You could see you could put any of the fire to get rid of it. Uh, no, this one, I don't know. It's the Port smells low. So, we all saw that Melissa chose an oil pan that was a little too small. <laughs> Amazon said five gallons, they lied. No, you said no. the engine contained five and a half gallons. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. So somebody's overfilled your oil. There, yes. It's that's possible. what we're going with. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, it couldn't be your mistake. Because you've already a, had more than a half. It was a brilliant recovery, out. any yeah. way you look at it. <laughs> now, if you want to uh, get a big pan, you can go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and get a concrete mixing pan. They're two feet wide, three feet long, about eight inches tall. They fit easily under your bus, and they hold like 20 gallons. On two five gallon buckets. If, if yeah. your engine, if your oil is hot, the engine's actually hot. Putting that uh, the the fill plug back in is not as easy as she made it seem. No, no, that is true. <laughs> if the engine is warm. It's not hot. Yeah. Any questions so far? Yeah, Mo, you having fun? Yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. So let that drip. Dirty is my favorite. <laughs> Say your favorite flavor. Yes. <laughs> is the oil is the oil specific to different buses too, or is it? 
Most, uh, most buses, most diesel engines will use a 15 W40 engine, or oil, sorry, that is specific, specific to diesel engines. If you have an older two-stroke Detroit diesel engine, there's none of them here, but sometimes there are at swarms. The two-stroke Detroit, Detroit diesel engine uses straight 40 weight oil, not a multi-weight. And a multi-weight, so when we're saying 15 W40, it means that when it's cold, it flows like a 40 weight, or it flows like a 15 weight engine. And it, the way they calculate that is they have a specific orifice, so a specific hole, and how long does it take, uh, you know, eight, we'll say eight ounces, I forget what the specific is, but a certain amount of oil to go through that hole. So a 15, that specific amount of oil would be 15 seconds. A 40 would be 40 seconds. So this is a multi-weight oil, so when it's cold, it acts like a 15 weight, so it flows faster, but when it's hot, it protects like a 40 weight oil. Uh, so it, it allows your oil to be multi-viscosity, so you want a, when the engine is cold, you want a very thin oil to allow it to spin, the starter to spin it freely, but when it's hot, you want a very thick oil to protect everything. How often should you change your oil? Great question. Uh, question. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations, but ideally 5,000 miles or six months. I think she's out. Uh, and with synthetic oils? Six months or five synthetic months. oils will last a lot longer. I was uh, told specifically not to switch my bus to synthetic oil, though, because. That's a myth. Yep. Uh, myth. Why? Okay. Explain so that. a lot of people, a lot of, you know, old wives' tale or old mechanics' tale, they'll say, don't change your oil, you know, if you used regular oil, don't go to a synthetic. First of all, synthetic oil does not mean it's a plastic oil, it just means it's oil that's over refined or refined more than a regular oil. So it's the same thing. The old wives tale was, if you put a synthetic oil, it's going to start to leak, it's going to break down the seals, etc, etc. No. If it starts to leak after you do an oil change and put synthetic oil in it, it just means it was leaking before and you didn't see it. Uh, but the synthetic oil, is it necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, if your oil, if your bus manufacturer or engine manufacturer specifies synthetic oil, then yes, use synthetic oil. Synthetic oil will be a little more expensive. Uh, there are other options as well. Uh, there is AMS oil, which they use a very highly refined synthetic oil and a specific oil filter. And basically it's an oil that you'll change every 50,000 miles. Or what's the? Uh, it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's, it's a, a bypass, long distance. It's a bypass but, system. but you'll change the filter more frequently. So the cheapest oil is the. I mean, there's not no. Most expensive, the cheapest. There's, there's no difference. Let's get the there's cheapest. very very little difference. Uh, there's a YouTube channel called Project Farm. If you like seeing tests and things like that, yeah. go watch his channel. And he has, uh, you know, tests on oil filters and tests on oil and. All sorts of things and you'll see the difference between you know the the cheapest he could find at Walmart to the yeah. most expensive he could find at Napa there's not that much of a difference okay. so but with, with synthetic versus the older <laughs> stuff, right synthetic is usually about twice the price but you can usually run it for twice the mileage so it works the, out to be the, the value same. is that you're changing you're not having to work as hard and it's change the your convenience oil, of how often right. you're doing it really now some and, bus if, and if you overheat if your bus gets really hot there's better protection with synthetic right. so I can't see why it's like lithium and lead acid yeah it's just don't I, I don't know why you use regular yeah. personally how about uh, yeah how about adding <laughs> Lucas Aldrey <laughs> so I had to start to plug on my car before this is the drain plug on Moe's engine, and we'll uh, we'll show it closer here. But this normally has a hole in it that you put a 3/8 socket in, or 3/8 ratchet, and it will break loose with that. At some point, someone had a lot of problems getting it out or stripped it because they welded a couple nuts to it. <laughs> so making it easier for her to remove. But this isn't the way it should be. And um, <laughs> so, oh, when you get the new pan, you get a new cloth. Novice, novice. <laughs> Are you making notes for the new things that you need? Yeah. I do. Now, there is, uh, and if someone wants to get under my bus, the back end of my bus is high enough, we'll, we'll show you later. On my engine, I actually have a tap. 
That's what right. I was so it's called. Know, it's a company called Easy motive. Oil, and it's just a, a quarter turn tap. I can drain my oil when I want, or take an oil sample. Now, an oil sample is a very important thing to do. Every time you change your oil, do a sample. A lot of bus companies to reduce costs. What they do is at the 5,000 mile mark, they take an oil sample and they change the oil filter. They send the sample in, they have it checked out. If it comes back saying change your oil, they'll change it. If not, they'll wait till it gets to the 10,000 mile mark. Then they change it. Uh, the other thing is this cap or this <coughs> plug is not magnetic. There are some that are magnetic. So when you take your oil plug out, don't wipe it off immediately. Take a look at it. See if you have metal, like a little flower of metal growing on it. If you have a little flower of metal growing on it, that's not a good thing. Uh, and like I said, the oil sample, do one every time. It costs 20 or 30 bucks and it will warn you of an impending problem. Maintenance is a heck of a lot cheaper than a repair. So are we still dripping down there? Hey, Ivan, how much do you need to take for the uh, About three to four ounces. Okay. Oh. They, they come with a little tube that you fill up, a little yeah. canister. So. Okay. It's like a urine test for, uh, Blatter, you, for the lads. Okay. Same deal. Wow. Same bottle. How about wow. Lucas Old Treatment? Uh, nothing good, nothing bad to say about it. It works. It thickens your oil. So, you may or may not want your oil to be thickened. It's good to use when you're passing it on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you want to explain what the, what's happening with the oil sample? That that's... So the oil samples, what they do is they they check a lot of things in your oil, and uh, I might have one in the, we might have one in the bus. If we do, we'll we'll show you what it is. But they analyze like 80 different components of your oil. It will tell you a lot of things. Uh, do, you have, do you have an injector that's leaking fuel into your oil? That's okay. called making oil. Uh, do you have coolant in your oil? Do you have particles of tin? Do you have particles of uh, tin or your bearings? Uh, do you have particles of brass? That means you've worn through the tin on your bearings and now you're into the brass, even worse. Uh, do you have particles of metal? Uh, they check the pH level of your oil. Is it acidic? Is it caustic? And there's a, a lot of different reports. They'll also check the viscosity of it. So basically after you've had one or two oil uh, analysis done, if you change your oil at 5,000 miles and you, by the analysis it comes back to, hey, your oil is basically new, then you know you can stretch it out a little further the next time. Uh, and if they come back saying, no, you've got no viscosity left, meaning the thickness of the oil, then it's, oops, I need to change it sooner next time. Okay. If you're bought, yes. Sorry, um, I know someone asked it. Where do you send this? Like, what is this called that you uh, send it there's to? A, if you go to any truck repair facility, they will have the little bottle and they'll send it in for you. They have a kit on Amazon. Yeah, and there's kits on Amazon as well. <laughs> but, you know, most of us are nomads and don't really have a good address uh, to ship to. So basically go to any truck repair facility. They will have an oil sample kit. You take your oil sample, you bring it back to them. You'll have a lab report within a day or two. Okay. So, so you just like you tighten this knot. But the oil analysis ultimately says it determines at what point the oil is breaking down to the point where it's actually no longer protecting the engine. So your your parts are wearing and rubbing. That's what releases the metal. And then it, that's how they determine your intervals. When they say, oh, 5,000 miles, it's saying with conventional oil at 5,000 miles, your oil is now breaking down to the point where it's wearing the engine. Change the oil so that doesn't happen. So that's the purpose. Hey, Mo, I, no. do, I do it as high as I can because I'm going to be the one that's got to do it Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So, a lot of different ways of removing an oil filter. This, depending on the size of your oil filter. So, Melissa's got a relatively small oil filter for a bus. Uh, for a car, this is huge. It's a small so this is a chain style one that you lock on and then you can turn this will damage the filter so you don't want to use it for putting new filter on but you want to use it for taking the old filter off so that's one style 
And this is sort of the last resort one. Yeah. This is, yeah. it's not coming off. Do that's the one the you want to use. Yeah, that's the. Yeah. Well, the old screwdriver that's right through the side. Yeah, yeah. 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 screwdriver the side the is right. a little messier. Really, really what about the claw? Stab it with a screwdriver. Yeah. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. That's so there are some that go on the bottom and turn. They don't make them big enough for this type of filter. They're meant more for automobile filters. And with a long filter like this, you want to grab your filter as high up on the filter as you can. That way you're putting the torque where you need. The, uh, so this type of filter wrench is good, uh, but on a bus, normally your filter will be sort of covered in oil and greasy, so the rubber belt is just going to slip. But they do work. The other one is these. So the channel lock, you can adjust it to different sizes. The mole will be able to get in there and turn it. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to lay it directly underneath it. So, she can be the oil can. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Unless you No. Watch your head. Watch your head and your back under there. You're about there. Apparently, it's disposable clothing at this point. Yeah. yeah. Except and for the phone in the pocket. A or a hat. She said no. So she reserves the uh, the shower for later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the shower will be done for the weekend. So my oil doesn't. My yeah. oil <laughs> right here. Right. In this really, really easy to reach spot. Yeah. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Oh, you're lucky. Uh, and stuff's going to come out on me? Oh, yeah. Oil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> warm oil. <laughs> It'll be warm and slippery. <laughs> so, oil filters are usually placed in a very inappropriate manner. On an engine, they're hard to get to. Yeah. It was definitely built by a man. Yeah. <laughs> no, no I always like to say they were built by a woman who knew that she was going to make the man nervous. Because she hated her husband. <laughs> For some of them, yeah. though, I, yeah. yeah. I got to loosen it, and then I come in there from the other side to undo it. And then I got to do it real quick. There's no way to not. And then I got to bring it in. And then I got to bring it in. Was to take, like, a chainsaw. Yeah. But, like, if I catch it, it's pretty good. Tell all the guys meeting that. No, no, shit. You'll be able to do that. So nobody be around. And then now it's like, I'm going to drop you more. Yes. So that way they it needed a good coating. You can yeah. do like we don't want it to rust. There's a rag right by you. So one thing in general Yes, they really place this oil filter. So Mo, do you have children? Because this is one of those moments when you lose all your inhibition, like childbirth, lying under a bus with a crowd of 50 people looking at you. <laughs> now, when we take the oil filter off, a few things we want to take a look at. First of all, is it damaged? No. 
we want to make sure nobody can damage the nap position <laughs> yeah right uh yeah where her oil filter is nothing is well protected there. We want to make sure that the rubber seal that is here, that's supposed to be here, is still on the filter. If it's not on the filter, that means it's still on the filter housing on the engine. And you don't want to put two different seals on because now you're going to get a leak. Is it on there? Yes, it is. Oh, good. Look at that. Look at that. Now we're going to get Mo to reach up as high as she can and wipe off. Oh, on the, the seat. Of the Wipe seal. off the housing, Mo. Wipe off where the seal was. Yes, yeah, so slide back where you are. <laughs> I'm so glad Thank this you, is all on video. <laughs> and it's going to be on YouTube, right? Yes. Yep. I think this should be on every platform. <laughs> Okay. She was that off. Yeah. Yeah. At least the outtake. So you said make sure that the filter is not damaged coming There's out. So yeah. Yeah. What kind of damage would we get? What could well, cause you, it to be damaged? You want to make sure it's not rusted. It does have a dent in it. Because if it has a dent, you want to figure out what caused the dent. Ow! Son of a biscuit. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, Mo, there's a bus there. Just your head. <laughs> now, on the side of the air oil filter, sorry. It's still bleeding. We have... A little pictogram. Number one, fill the filter with oil. Number two, make sure it's filled with oil and make sure your seal is oiled. Number three, spin it on till it just touches. And then three quarters of a turn more. That is for this filter. Your filter will vary. There's some that say a third of a turn. There's some that say a half a turn. There's some that say one turn. There's always instructions on the filter. And you'll have a replacement filter. The filter we took off might have said half. This one depends on the seal that they're putting on it. There's a lot of different changes. The other thing we want to do is compare the new filter to the old filter to make sure it's the same. We already did that before taking it off, so we're good. And we cross reference the numbers. So see this hand tight. You don't you don't use a wrench. Hand tight with dry hands. You're not oiling yeah. hands. Right. But, but don't wrench. No. That's what I am. Really. Because it could damage it. I've never had one leak doing it hand tight. Don't worry about it. So, first thing we have to do is fill the filter with oil. That just gives it more of a challenge when Mo is trying to put it back up in that hole. Uh -oh. Perfect. Just remember, if you drink this one, though, Mo, it's cleaner oil. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to the biggest jug. Well, then take one of the small ones. No problem. You go ahead and if you don't feel it. Fill it up. Okay, excellent question. What happens if you don't fill the filter with oil? When you start your engine up, there's going to be an air bubble in there that your filter or your bearings and everything will run dry for just a little amount of time. Not a good situation. I've been, yeah. never filled so there are <laughs> there are people that will argue, and for good reason, to fill the dirty side of the filter. Because I mean, um, if there's debris in the oil itself, right. or you've left it open, yeah, there are mechanics that would argue to fill the dirty side of the filter. So when you put it in, it won't suck whatever could have gotten in it yeah. into the clean oil. But it's really slow to do it. <laughs> yeah. And what the... The dirty side is the outside. Yeah, what Eric is saying is you should... A lot of people suggest to fill the oil from this side. So, go ahead. Yeah, it's a little late, but... Yeah. No one does it, but if you ever okay. get debris in your clean oil and you're pouring it, it could get in that clean side. Yeah, and actually you want to For those of us who can't see it back here, what's the difference There's between the sides? There's holes. See the oh, one filter we playing this way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On, well, suddenly there's holes on the outer side. So instead of pouring it down in the big oh, okay. center hole, pour and it on the, the other outer rim. You can also just fill both. It definitely takes longer, but it does. And the other reason for filling it that way, despite what Eric said, which is the right one of the one of the reasons, the other reason is you'll actually get the whole filter medium wet. <coughs> and you're actually getting the filter full that way. It takes longer to fill it because it has to drain down through the filter medium Transfer into to the, the center. Other side. Yeah. yeah. Now, Eric's engine, 
<laughs> it's C7 problems. Yes, not anymore. No. <laughs> so if you have a cat C7, you need to speak with Eric. <laughs> Eric has done a lot of research and a lot of work to quote unquote bulletproof his engine. There if you are could, if you could take a moment to explain that. Yeah. There are two filters. Uh, the, the Achilles heel of a lot of the engines are the Huey pump. It essentially, it, uh, high pressure oil, it creates high pressure oil to fire your injector. It used to be cam driven, it used to do it. Uh, later they come out with the common rail. Now there's another one that compresses the oil to a higher. Um, yeah, so we're um, outside <laughs> and bubbling yes, up. Uh, but um, it essentially, if you if your Huey pump goes, there's a good chance it can send debris down line to your injectors. And if you have a C7, they're $900 a piece. And um, so you'll ruin your Huey pump and all six of your injectors, possibly. Wow. So they make a post filter called an IFS kit that's manufactured not by CAT. But it's a $900 filter, but it will essentially catch any debris coming from your failed Huey system before it passes into your um, injectors or your, your high pressure oil rail on the top. And then CAT makes a $200 filter that is a pre Huey filter um, pump. So your plate that your oil filter screws onto, there's a common problem with cat engines that the gasket behind it, if it fails, you can get clean oil and your dirty oil can transfer. So then you can put dirty oil before your Huey pump. So then there's a little filter they make that will keep that from happening. So essentially you can filter the oil before and after that Huey pump. That way if it fails, you'll only replace the Huey pump and not you know, 900 times six plus labor. For your, uh, but what? anytime if you guys want to know, it's my engine bay is open after this. If you want to go take a look, and um, I can point out where they are if you got a cat engine and you're interested in it. But it's, uh, huh? yeah, I know. Bulletproof, yes, so to speak. <laughs> Another thing you could do with these oil filters is uh, take a sharpie and write the mileage and the date that you put them on. That's nice because uh, sometimes you forget if you don't have a log. Then when you pull it off, you can say, "Oh, cool, it was." You know, yeah. only 5,000 miles ago or something. I maybe forgot to log one time when I pulled my filter off. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a smart thing. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> but I'd forgotten. And speaking of which, we did a pre inspection on Mo's bus uh, before doing this and her air dryer. You, uh, everybody has an air system, has an air dryer. Air dryer, not air dryer. Yeah. The, <laughs> the air dryer on her system, someone wrote on it the last date it was changed January 2015. Yeah, oh, oh, that is something that should be done on a yearly basis. Oh, wow. so eight years have been missed. Very good, very good. Okay, get under there. I'll pass this over. Slow, slow, slow underneath there. Yeah, slow down. She likes. She's up for the challenge. You want to move real slow under the bus, right? Yeah. You're going to start leaking red fluids. Not good. No. <laughs> we got a nurse here, right? The hot one, red one. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. Ready to go. <laughs> we we, we, we <laughs> were the whole, like, chalking the, the bus, and I was Back. like, oh, shit. And now we're going to transition into medical part two. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Kayla here. So First aid part two. First aid. I love how people say, that, oh, there's a nurse here. Like, I... I'm like I have anything on me. Yeah. <laughs> I just bought it's a medical be, kit. Yeah, I'm you so should excited to use it. I'll run and get it. It's gonna be. Yeah, you should go to the hospital. I'll just walk yeah. back like I did the last Right. Long drive from here. Come back. Oh, she's no longer breathing. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right yeah. Right around here. That's where you get there. I feel. Stop the bleeding. I feel the thing. Yeah. 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 You can feel it. Oh yeah. Except mine says gypsy on it. Does it have anything on it? Cool. Just in case we get a mix up. Yeti. Oh, it also says Yeti. But it says Gypsy on it. Oh. Like, I had it personally. Oh, that just rubbed yeah. off. No, I, no, I still have it. I'm just saying, if we get a mix up. <laughs> you know, my, like, my Gypsy well, rubbed off. Yeah, yeah. How much is a road I love that cup. I know. This is my friend that I stole from her, so it's sentimental. Yeah. Is her name Gypsy? No. <laughs> Because of the location of her filter, it's very difficult to get to. We can use the rubber one to tighten it on to get to that three-quarter turn. Yeah, because you can't do it by hand. Oh, wow. I'm a flat nose. <laughs> 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 
no oh, wonder we can't get anything done. Okay. The oil filter is on. Now, we have two fuel filters here. We have a primary and a secondary. Where they put the primary on this is uh -huh. really fun. Obviously, the engineers from this bus company never do their own maintenance. <laughs> Look at this oil filter, or fuel filter, sorry. There's a few things with it. This is an oil, or uh, fuel filter, but also a water separator. So we have a little drain here that if we do get water in our fuel, we can drain it off. And you open this drain, and when you see, you'll see water coming up first, and then eventually fuel. When you see fuel, you close it off. There's also a little sensor here to tell you you have water in your fuel. How does that happen? Yeah, yeah. Where does that happen? Bad fuel, no, uh, condensation, parking your bus too long, there's all sorts of different things that can happen. There could be a light How does it but... let you know that there's water right. in it? What's, 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 what's the sensor uh, basically knows the difference between fuel and water. Oh. So, it doesn't have a valve to turn it off, uh -oh. so Melissa will have to work very quickly. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's drinking fuel. Yeah. <laughs> now, luckily the filters are at almost the highest point of the engine, so there won't be a, too much of a draining effect. Just make sure you close your mouth. You close your mouth all the time. Yes. So let's are empty there. out that oil. Uh, Can we get that one one more time? Can we do time this up there or down here? The, uh, these filters? Both. How do you do two? You don't. Uh, <laughs> so, on your filter down there. Yeah. No. On your filter down there, you've got a thing like this. You want to do that so it'll drain out the filter. Is it better or worse than the soap in the mouth? So just put the pan underneath. Do we have a jug? Do we have a bucket? I have a five-gallon bucket. Oh, I have a bucket. You have that. I have a five-gallon bucket. In there? Did you say so? It's all waste oil. Yay! Okay, so I have to pull that out. Drain the fuel. Not get it in my mouth. Yeah. Not getting it. Not getting it. Yeah, out. Like, I, okay, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't smell it. <laughs> So, Melissa got this off by hand. Another round of applause. Woo! And she also got the old O ring off. Good. Woo okay, I think very this is all the way up. I don't feel safe. Okay, very good. Well, as you're threading the new filter on, it will go up. Now, we need to fill the new filter with fuel. Something we neglected to bring. Anybody 
got a can full of diesel? Uh, I'll, I'll get some. Yeah. So if y'all want to come behind my bus, I'll show you something. He's gonna do a job. That's a useful skill to have. I don't so need these. Okay. This is the fuel filter housing. Uh -huh. Your fuel filter is screwed into this, and you'll see that there's a plug here. Most of these fuel filter housings use one quarter NPT. <laughs> when we went to the hardware store the other day, we got one quarter NPT fittings. This is a 3 8 NPT. That's why I was asking before someone had a 3 8 quarter inch adapter to put this in. But basically, we would screw this into the top and it stays there permanently on her bus. If she ever runs out of fuel for some reason, if she ever needs to change her fuel filters because of damage, something in the fuel or whatever, this, using the little garden sprayer that has an airline quick connect on it, that goes on there, you open the valve, you pump this up, you can fill the whole fuel system with it. It's a very simple, simple hack. But we don't have that today. So we'll use this to fill her new fuel filter. This one here. No, this is the new one. Now another thing you can use to fill your fuel filters is automatic transmission fluid. You can also fill your fuel filters with automatic transmission fluid. So if you just hold this here. Is there any advantage to that using ATF? Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the advantage of the ATF, it's thicker. Some people claim it cleans injectors. That little bit of ATF will not clean your injectors. So now we're filling the fuel filter. And, yeah. and when it's filled, Mo well, will get back under her bus and install the fuel filter. I was so excited. Yeah. <laughs> They're normally easier to put on than they are to take off. Oh, the sun. <laughs> so Mo has her O-ring already installed, the one we showed you before. So this one was already installed on the threaded shaft where this goes in. Now she has two fuel filters on her bus. <laughs> and most of you should have two fuel filters, a primary and a secondary. <laughs> and it's the primary, if you're having problems with your fuel, the primary that is the one that gets changed a lot. In this case, it's the one that's really hard to get to. Secondary is super easy to get to. Yeah. Okay. So how often would you have to change the secondary? Uh, whenever you're changing your oil, change your fuel filters. Just a, just a nice. Yeah. Yeah. Is the secondary if you usually want to have fuel separator? No. Are we on a line too? You look like it's <laughs> And the filter she got for her secondary is not the right filter. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It's missing a part. Oh. They sold no, her no, the no, no, it's not. You reuse the part that's on it. You talk there about isn't the bowl? One. Are you talking <laughs> about the bowl? Yeah, you don't have a bowl on your old one. <laughs> what? Right. But that's the one that's easy to change? Yeah. That's good. Can you say that again? So, if you look at this filter, we have the top end that we normally have. Right. But you can see through it. Oh, no bottle. Right. So there's normally a bowl that goes on here, 
that resembles this. It will have this little fitting on it to separate water out of it. Yeah. Not don't have it. Someone changed her filter to one that would fit the space, but not the right one for the bus. Okay. At some point in its life. Oh, yeah, they both yeah. have a water separator on them? Yeah. Oops. How are you doing down there? I got it into position. Okay. Now I got it into the This is a line for the foot massage? Right. Right. That's what it looks like. Right. Yeah. And just so you know, her oil filter. <laughs> Took a little under three quarts. <laughs> My bus only took seven quarts. <laughs> so while she's having fun down there, we'll start adding oil to the engine. It's on! It's on! Yeah. It's on. Oh, that feels so good. Woo, that's it. Three it's quarters a, of a turn yeah, is what it says on the in the front. It's a, so same thing. You get it just barely on, and then three quarters of a turn. It's a 6.5 liter uh, diesel. Diesel. Only take. I could have just put that oil filter on. Phones on in the pocket. Yeah, lights. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Lights on, but no one's yeah, on. Lights on. Then that's something to break it all. <laughs> so we have half a gallon in. We got another two and a half. What is that noise? That's my neck and my back. Oh. Drain plug is on. Like I thought you worked from the yes. top. Yes. Uh, <laughs> he's my magic man. I can't tell you what's the matter. Yeah. I'm still working on it this year. Do you remember how tight it was when you took it off? I know what the so any questions on the oil and fuel filter change? That's why. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling fantastic. What's the cost of your fill difference between like like how much did you expect to pay for an oil change and a whole maintenance thing? I don't know that a lot of dollars. Two to three hours of labor is what they'll charge you. Are somewhere between 125 and 175 an hour. Yeah. <laughs>